Hi, in this video I'm going to explain what it means when people say normally open and normally closed. This is particularly relevant with switches, limit switches, relays. In this video I'm going to go through each type of device and show you what it means when it's normally open, normally closed. Over here I have my multimeter. I've set it for continuity. The purpose of this is to see if there is a low impedance path between the leads. For example, here are the two leads which are connected to my meter and as I measure across the shaft of the screwdriver you can hear and see my meter operating. You can hear that buzzer is telling me it's a short circuit and if you have a look at the ohms, it's less than 2 ohms, very low resistance. So this is considered a short circuit. On the right hand side I've got three switches. These are very common switches often used in plugs and lights. Notice how when I operate the switch, I can either open the circuit or close the circuit. Watch. Closed. Open. Closed. Open. So the buzzer is telling me it's a closed circuit. Now this type of switch is called a latching switch because as I depress the switch, it stays in that position. And if I depress it the other way, it stays in that position. Now over here I have what is called a push button switch. As I depress it, you can see it bounces back up. I've got another one over here. As I depress it, it bounces back up. These come in all shapes and sizes. Now I've connected my one lead to the one terminal and my other lead to the other terminal. Watch what happens when I depress the button. It's closing the circuit. You can hear the buzzer of the meter making that sound. Open circuit. Closed. Open. Do you notice that when I've released the button, and when the switch is at rest, it is an open circuit. When I push it, it is now a closed circuit. Over here I have a little diagram. There are two contacts there and then a platform. When I depress the platform down, this platform shorts out those terminals and current can flow and then we hear that sound on my buzzer, on my meter. This is called a normally open switch. As you can see, under normal conditions, there is no buzzing. The circuit is open circuit. When I push it, I am now closing the circuit. So this is a normally open switch. I now have another switch. Immediately when I've connected the leads, you can hear the buzzer on the meter signifying a short circuit. When I depress the push button, you can hear the meter stops making that sound and the display shows open circuit. As I release the push button, it is now a closed circuit. So this is a normally closed switch. Under normal conditions, the circuit is closed. I now have two diagrams here. You can see that I have a supply, a battery supply. Then I have a push button switch which is normally open. You can see that the current cannot flow here because there is a gap there. That push button is open. Then it feeds into an LED and then I've just got a current limiting resistor. I'm going to show you the circuit shortly. At the bottom here I have the same circuit but I've only changed the switch from a normally open to a normally closed. So in the bottom one, current will flow all the time unless I depress that switch and open the circuit. So this is a normally closed switch unless I depress it and open the circuit. On the top here, it is an open circuit unless I depress it and close the circuit. So once I depress that, then and only then can current flow. That is why this is called normally open. Under normal conditions, it's an open circuit. Right, now I've now constructed such a circuit. There's the battery. From the battery it goes to the switch. There's the switch wire. Then from the output of the switch it goes into an LED. There it is. And there's my current limiting resistor and then it goes back to the battery. Notice that the LED is off. Only when I depress the switch, closing it, does the LED go on. Off. On. So this is a normally open switch because under normal conditions the circuit would be off. Now all I'm going to do is change the switch for a normally closed one. Right, so this is the normally closed switch and you'll notice that the LED is already on. Only when I depress the push button switch, you can see the LED goes off. Notice that this is a momentary change. It's only off while I'm holding this in. When I release it, it goes back on. That is why it is called a normally closed switch. It is not a latching switch, because it changes state when you release your finger. Now I've changed the switch for another push button switch. 
So by looking at the LED being on, you would think it was a normally closed switch. But have a look at this. It's now off. On. Off. On. Off. So this is not a normally open or a normally closed switch. This is a latching switch. So while the switches may look the same, they do not operate the same. Right, I've returned the normally open switch back to the circuit. Notice that when I press, I make the contacts close. So this is called a push to make switch, which is also a normally open switch. Notice how when I depress the button, I'm making contact. I've now changed the switch again and notice that the LED is on. But when I depress the button, notice that the LED goes off. This is also called a push to break button. Can you see that when I release it, the circuit is closed. But when I push it, I'm breaking the circuit. So this is a push to break. There it is a normally closed switch, push to break. Right, I'm now going to explain how this works on a limit switch. Also note there's an additional terminal present here. Now in order to explain how this operates, I need to explain the difference between a single pole single throw and a single pole double throw switch. So over here I have two switches that look the same. There you can see two light switches, but if you look at the back you can see there's an extra terminal there. I'm going to quickly show you the difference between these two switches, which will help in explaining how the limit switch circuit works. Right, so these two terminals are equivalent to these two terminals and notice that both switches are in the off position. So if I move these like so, the meter is still saying an open circuit. Closed, open, closed, open. So, so far everything's the same, but I'm now going to swap this lead and I've now put this crocodile lead on that terminal. And notice it's immediately a short circuit. Open, closed, open, closed. Watch what happens when I move it to the other side. It is open. I have to close it like that, but when I swap this around again, it is now open on that side. So what this means is this is the common and I have two outputs. When the switch is depressed like that, between there and there is an open circuit, while there and there is a short circuit. When I rock the switch to the other orientation, you can see that that's an open circuit now. But this and this is now a short circuit. Right, so here's a quick diagram. As you can see, there's a link that joins that pole to this point over here. This link can move from there to there. So we can see that we can have two different circuits connected to the one supply. There's my supply. Over here, I have a limit switch. On the front, you can see it says common. N-O-N-C. N-C stands for normally closed and this is normally open. So we can see that we also have three terminals here. One input and two outputs. So if I connect my meter to the one input and I connect my crocodile lead to the normally open, notice that the meter will only make the sound when I close the switch. How do you close a limit switch? I just depress that. Right, you should be able to hear the meter in the background. When I move this to the other side, it's closed already because it's normally closed. It'll open only when I depress the lever. So as I showed on this switch, we had three terminals. Well, we also have three terminals here. But these switches are not normally open or normally closed because they latch, as you can see. But look at the limit switch. It changes state while I'm depressing the lever, but when I release my pressure, it changes state again. That is why it is a momentary switch. And that is why the labels of normally open and normally closed are shown on the body here. Now over here, I have a limit switch which I've opened. So the red crocodile lead is connected here. This is all connected and you can see the link is currently resting on the top pin. If I move this to the normally closed, you'll hear the meter. So there you can see the current can go all the way in there, there, and through that pad, the contacts are touching and it goes out of the meter. If I open this, look at that. I'm opening it, but can you see that it is spring-loaded? And watch what happens when I depress the lever. And this is what makes it a momentary switch. As I release it, it goes back to its resting position. But if I want to use the normally open connection, 
I must put my lead over there. Only when I push to make does the normally open become closed. So normally open becomes closed and normally closed becomes open. But when I release the pressure from the push button here, the normally closed goes back to closed circuit and the normally open goes back to an open circuit. I now have a little circuit. There's my battery. I've got two LEDs. One LED is connected to the limit switch on the normally closed terminal. The other LED is connected to the normally open side. This is the symbol for the limit switch. For your reference, here are the symbols for normally open limit switch, normally closed limit switch. And then here is a normally closed limit switch, but it's held open. And here is a normally open limit switch held closed. Remember, we need to hold this in place in order to change the state. Over here, I've built the circuit. There's the battery. The battery is connected to a limit switch. So the positive of the battery is going to my limit switch to the input. Then you recall that there should be two outputs. There my limit switch has two output options, either a normally closed or a normally open. In this case, the normally closed is connected to a red LED. So over here on this yellow lead, you can see that it comes to here and there's a red LED which is already on. It's already in the on position because it's connected to the normally closed side of the limit switch. The normally open side of the limit switch is connected to an LED. There is the white cable coming to an LED over here. This LED is called a high bright and it will emit a red light when it is activated. Both are fed via a current limiting resistor back to the battery. There's my resistor and it goes back to the battery. So at the moment the LED connected to the normally closed section of the limit switch is on. When I depress the limit switch notice how the other LED goes on. When I release the limit switch, notice how the bigger LED for the normally closed circuit is now on. I am toggling between the normally open and the normally closed contacts. So there you can see the circuit diagram. Current can flow through this LED back to the supply. When I depress the limit switch, closing the normally open, making it a closed circuit, you can see that current will only flow through this LED because this one will become open circuit. Now lastly, how does that work on a relay? Now some relays have numerous outputs, but I'm just going to show it on this basic relay. Right, so here I have a relay and there's a normally open and normally closed connection. There's the common, the one in the middle. It's not always like that for all relays, but I know it's the common because this piece moves. If you look at this copper conduct that is in the middle sandwiched between these two sides, that is the one that is moving left and right. It's either gonna mate with that conductor or it's gonna mate with that conductor. I've connected the red lead to the middle conductor and at the back my black lead is on this conductor. You should be able to hear the meter making that buzzing sound telling me it's a short circuit. If I follow the current, look, it'll go there, there, touching there and out through the black crocodile lead there for short circuit. Now I've moved the black crocodile lead to this one but it won't make that sound because it's an open circuit at the moment. Look at the red lead goes there, the current would go there but it cannot jump across. You can see that it's actually open. Between those two pads there, it's open. So what that means is only when this conductor jumps to that side will it close the circuit. So I need to apply 12 volts to this coil in order to operate the relay. Right, I now have 12 volts waiting to be applied to the relay and watch what happens when I apply it. So at the moment the black is connected to the normally open contact. You can see that the circuit is an open circuit. Only when the relay engages does it become closed. Normally open because nothing's applied to the relay. Closed. If I swap this around, it's now on the normally closed side, but when I engage the relay, watch what happens. It opens. Normally closed, open. Right, to sum up, these are not momentary switches because they latch. This on the other hand is your momentary switch with the normally closed and normally open connections. Here's the symbol for normally open. Here's the symbol for normally closed. In control systems, we use these type of symbols to signify a normally open and a normally closed switch. Thanks for watching and cheers.